bloody fantastic. Hey, hello everybody, my name is Goodboy, and welcome to a video on how to counter Viper. Currently, Viper has one of the best win rates in the meta right now. He's played quite regularly, and it's time for you to know how to kick him in the face. Okay, so Viper has some very serious strengths, but also some very serious weaknesses. Let's start off with his strengths. So, naturally, of course, he deals out massive levels of magic damage, and in, in particular, he has massive levels of slow. Once Viper's on you, it's very, very difficult to escape if you don't have, well, some kind of meaningful escape. He can flash farm like crazy with his nether toxin, his break can also become silence at level 25, and he has massive magic damage resist. On the flip side, however, he has no active disables, which makes it can be difficult for him to approach targets, particularly because he has quite a slow movement speed. He is reasonably kiteable, and he has a small mana pool, which means dishing out his spells sometimes can be a bit of a problem. Not to mention, of course, the hero is highly spell dependent. So those weaknesses can be exploited and used meaningfully against him. So first off, let's talk about heroes that Viper counters really well. The first and foremost is tanks with strong passives. Now, Nether Toxin is easily one of the most overpowered abilities in the game, and part of that is due to the fact that you can break heroes so easily. And tanks like Bristleback, Tidehunter, even Axe, Dragon Knight, Mars, all who have passive abilities which give them massive durability, basically get countered by Viper. So, for example, Axe, who loves to use his counter helix, can't do that when Viper's got him in Nether Toxin, which means he can't escape. And Bristleback, who's known for being extremely tanky, all of a sudden finds that his ability, Bristleback, doesn't actually work anymore, which means you can burn him into the ground. It's a similar story, for, actually, for carries with strong passives. So it's the same kind of thing again as well, where you desperately need that passive to work, but actually you're going to struggle to actually get it to work because he's breaking it. So Spectre is easily the most counted hero because both of his, he's got two abilities which are passive. Um, Dispersion and Desolate both don't work, which means you're just left with Haunt and your Spectral Dagger, which is super, super easy for Viper to kill him with. Unless, of course, he haunts his way out of there. But generally that's not going to be an issue. A similar story for Razor because of his unstable current. Slark also's essence shift doesn't work, and Phantom Assassin can't do coup de gras or have evasion, which means she gets burned really hard by this hero. Magic damage heroes generally tend to have a tough time against Viper because of corrosive skin and the high levels of magic resistance that Viper has. So heroes like Necrophos, Zeus, and Earthshaker, all who dish out magic damage, tend to find they're not that effective. Meanwhile, Viper can counter them all quite nicely. Zeus and Necrophos particularly as they're quite squishy and in Necrophos's case you can't use Heartstopper Aura which basically means the guy just gets poisoned and slowed to death. I mean it's, it's, it's a fantastic count to be honest. Squishy heroes that are just generally supports who deal magic damage are also in the same problem. So they also have the same problem. Crystal Maiden, Warlock and even Winter Wyvern because Winter Wyvern's uh, Cold Embrace doesn't actually work with Nether Toxin. Or at least, it doesn't block the magic damage, so Viper will just continue to burn the hero to death while they're trapped there. In fact, in many ways, Winter Wyvern helps you kill the hero that you're trying to save. Um, so, uh, uh, a great counter there, generally, in terms of abilities. In terms of heroes that are very strong against uh, Viper, obviously it plays against the weaknesses. So silence can be a big problem, and either you're a natural, you naturally give silence, or you can you naturally buy uh, as a core item an Orchid Malevolence. So heroes like Clinks. Clinks is easily one of the best hard counters. Um, a because obviously the silence from Orchid, but B because of the massive physical damage burst. Death Prophet and Drow Ranger have a similar scenario where they both can dish out quite a lot of physical damage and also both have silences, so they can be great heroes. 
High physical damage burst, heroes, or a similar story. While Viper is extremely good at resisting magic damage, he is not so good at resisting physical damage. Now again, you can buy counter items which help, but generally if someone can nuke you with massive levels of physical damage, um, well, the Viper tends to struggle. So again, Clinks, as I mentioned before, but Sniper, who can keep a really good distance, kite the hero while pummeling them. And then Juggernaut, particularly with Omni Slash Ulti. Which, if Viper's on his own, basically means he will definitely die. So, um, so do you know? Look out for those kind of heroes. Multi-unit heroes or illusion heroes can be a nightmare for uh, Viper in the laning phase, but also generally throughout the game. So, Broodmother and Chen can usually turn up with a lot of different units, and while steadily over time, Never Toxin would eat them if they stayed in one place. Typically, those heroes tend to overwhelm Viper and push him back. And if he has no meaningful escape, then he's dead. Similar story for illusions like uh, Chaos Knight and Terror Blade, uh, where in which they surround Viper, make it very difficult for Viper to escape, and then smash him to death. Again, Terror Blade can do a huge amount of physical damage, particularly with Metamorphosis, not to mention it's very easy for him to sunder Viper should the fight go in a negative direction. So again, great heroes to look out for. Diffuser Blade Carriers or Mana Burn is a similar story. So again, Phantom Lancer, great counter there with the illusion of physical damage. But also the fact that it's going to burn your mana at the same time. It can also be quite easy for uh, Phantom Lancer to escape and then come back and then start beating Viper again. So, um, and then he gets one round of Nether Toxin off and then he's done. Similar story for Anti-Mage, uh, particularly once uh, he gets Manta Style. Um, again... Uh, he'll just burn his mana, and then if the fight goes bad, then Antimage will simply blink away, and that ruins all the fun. So a good counter there. Finally, escape heroes are a problem, particularly, again, if they can deal out lots of physical damage. Um, so Wind Ranger, obviously, is very, very... While her evasion doesn't particularly concern uh, Viper, her ultimate ability certainly does, uh, as does the fact that, actually, she can just run away outside of Viper's range, and so, therefore, making Viper have a tough time. Morphling naturally can escape, but also Morphling can not only copy Viper, but also dish out massive levels of physical damage if required. And then, finally, Weaver. Weaver deals huge amounts of physical damage, but also has lots of escape mechanisms. So, very, very easy for him to simply Kai, outfight, and then beat to death. In terms of carrying with items, um, there are several different approaches you can take. Naturally, of course, Disable is the first one. So, ironically, although Viper tends to buy a Rod of Atos, if you get a Rod of Atos and use it on Viper, that tends to shut him down and gives you enough time for the slows to wear off for you to get away. And similar story if you've got some really good farm with Scythe of Ice. So, turn him into a pig and then run away. Um, escape items can also work pretty well, but it depends... Um, so Blink Dagger I generally don't recommend uh, as, as a meaningful escape because um, any kind of slow or resistant damage means that you're just not going to blink away. But a four staff will work and usually take you outside of Viper's range, which is pretty nice. Also, a BKB helps dispel or break off most of the slows, but do be warned it doesn't work on Viper Strike. So while with BKB I do recommend as a good item, um, it's not a perfect resistance to Viper. Um, General magic resistance items are going to work really well against Viper, so Pipe, uh, Hood of Defiance, uh, anything else that's going to give you magic resistance is going to you know, fare pretty well. Do not get Ghost Scepter or E-Blade as a type of resistance against Viper. That just means Viper will kill you much easier. Definitely do not pick those items. And then finally, Silence or Mana Burn items, so Diffuser Blade or Orchid, if it's appropriate for your carry to carry it, or if it's appropriate for your hero to carry it. Um, providing you get those, then that works pretty nicely and well. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Those are the main uh, ways which you can count a Viper. And now, when you're looking at your drafting phase, do plan carefully, because Viper is generally a really overpowered hero right now. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And as always, please like, subscribe, and share my video. And check below in the description for giveaways and other good stuff. Thank you, and goodbye.